everybody. Welcome to the Town of Orange Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission meeting scheduled for today, Tuesday, March 13th. I'd like to introduce the staff. I'm Charles Waskowitz, Chairman of the Commission. To my left, Rick Mangione. Bill Perfetto. Uh, Michael Ropershaw. Drew Gunning. Jim Ewan. Diana Ross. Is that better? Thank you. If you'd take a moment to review the minutes. Welcome, Leslie. We're just now reviewing our minutes. Is quiet. Anyone have any uh, changes, discussion, entertain a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the February 27th minutes. Thank you, Rick. May I get a second? second. Thank you, Leslie. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as written, February 27th, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. And one abstain. Two. Abstain. Two. Did you get those, Katie? Very good. Thank you. The next item on the agenda tonight is uh, some correspondence. There seems to be only one item. It's a uh, it looks like it's an article from a website, Wetland Bird Rediscovered in Thailand. A wetland bird that eluded, eluded scientists for nearly 130 years has been rediscovered at a wastewater treatment plant in Thailand. I'm not familiar with that one. I thought we were looking for the bird in Alabama. You want to add something on there? Found it and thought it was quite interesting. Yeah, actually, I read that. It was a very interesting story and in how they found it and what they did with it. They ended up sending it to England or something like that because I think that was the only other place that they actually had uh, something to compare it to. I did the name. It's, it's a large build reed warbler, and it hasn't been seen since 1867. I think Mr. Bespute has seen them before, hasn't he? <laughs> He's not here. I can pick on him. <laughs> yeah, it's all part of that whole wetlands protection. Yeah, that is. I see. Thank you. Any other correspondence? None. Okay. Uh, new applications for receipt? There are none. However, we do have for discussion a continuation of 610 Racebrook Road, Whitney Acres, lot number one. And please come up and state your name. And who you're representing at the podium, please.
Hi, everybody. I am Suzanne Olson Ivino of Olson Built Homes LLC, and I am here to submit the actual site plan for Lot One, Whitney Acres. You all should have a revised site plan in front of you. We're Hopefully, going, we're going to share. Yeah. Share now. How many do you have? Uh, uh, we've got eight, I think. There's there were some revisions, and uh, this came in two days. So. How many more do you have? We can send some more now. Oh, send some more then. Thank you. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, on the originally proposed site plan, the footing of the house was larger. The actual foundation print was slightly larger. We have uh, made that a bit smaller. The footprint of the house was footprint. larger. Footprint. The clearing limits have essentially stayed the same. This be north? Is north to the right? Yeah, right yeah there it yeah. is. Okay, thank you. It's as big no. as can be. I couldn't even find it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that makes sense. It crosses the road. Also, for your information, the septic system has been approved by the town sanitarian. Where will the proposed driveway be? It's actually at your bottom left, left, okay. left corner. On the original site plan, the house was like 80, or, or during subdivision approval, the conceptual house was about 80 feet long and like 60 some odd feet wide. They put the biggest box mm -hmm. that they could fit on this site as part of the conceptual and the mm -hmm. subdivision approval came through. And as per condition of permit, this lot is back before us, um, again, as part of condition of permit, and it is the actual Site proposed plan. Mm -hmm. site plan layout with a much smaller house than what was originally conceptually designed. Any concerns about this? No, you know why? No. The question about the footing drain. Yeah, if I was just look looking at, this, at the footing drain. If you look at these, the soils over there, we, we talked about this quite a bit. Um, it, it, everything that, on the test pit data, in fact, even as late as... Um, 223 of this year there were more uh perk tests done and it really was uh, it's just sand and gravel in that particular area you know, out, out along the back there so the, the likelihood of them even working is pretty nil function i mean come into play yeah come into play Commissioners, any questions for the applicant or re request for any in additional information or anything less that, such as that? Is this lot all treed or is it? Uh, at the moment, it is, yes. It has not been cleared yet. Um, where's the driveway draining to? It's going to head right down 
across it, the back lawn. No, I know. Andrew, is it just going to go down the back back of the lawn? Is that the? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look at the elevation, you got 178. Yeah, 76, 72. It's just going to go down the back. 176. Slopes down to that turnaround. Right. Uh, let's see what's scale on this 40. 140. So you got. Two hundred and fifty, two hundred so three hundred and seventy six feet if you look at the uh, boundary marker there before you even get down to where the wetlands are. I see it looks like somebody penciled in right below the, uh, or in the clear spot. Is it clearing limit? Is that on everybody's copy? Yeah, and it's in where, green where on yours. Where I have yours. the green, yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Could um, you see that clearly on everyone? You recognize where the clearing limit is? Yes. Pretty much follows the uh, sill fence line almost, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. exactly. I have no further questions. Okay. Anybody else? Originally, that clearing, the why the clearing limit's shown that way is it was down, it would, <laughs> my mouth worked when I started. <laughs> Originally went to test hole 401, if you look at where that is, uh, past the reserve area, Perk 505, the clearing limit was way down at that point, and it's somewhere along the way between somebody, we asked if we could get that reserve area pulled much farther back up, so that's why the clearing limit mm -hmm. has been highlighted to show that there's been a substantial change from what the making it much closer in favor of the trees in favor of the trees uh, much closer than what was on the proposed um, subdivision plan quiet group tonight it's daylight savings time. We're all messed up. They're still thinking about that bird in Thailand. Really? <laughs> There's no birds from Thailand in here. <laughs> you sure? I'm pretty sure. I'll make a motion to approve the submitted site plan. Is this uh, revised it? Yes. I'll make a second. Division was 228.07. Correct. Yep. Revised to 228.07. I think the original was back in 04. Yeah, the original was 130.07, revised house layout. And then the health department is 220.07. And then the, that was still further. I think there's one more should be even above that. It's not listed. It just says revisions. I think yeah. those are the same revisions as the health department because the uh, reserve area is cut. It just says 228. Cut in. Were you looking for the date that it was originally submitted? Is that what you were referencing? Because it's December doesn't. 7th, uh, 05, maybe. Yeah, there it is right there. Oh, 06. 06. 06. Dated 06. So it might be that. That's the same one, brother. Because yeah. sure. this is lot one, not the original subdivision. Right, this is lot one, Whitney Acres. Mm -hmm. 706. Well, standard conditions approval. We'll take uh, one. You'll get what these are momentarily. Number two. Okay. Number three. Number four. Number five. Uh, number eight. System stakeout, septic system stakeout. I mean, it's standard, isn't it? Uh, <coughs> All they gotta have is staked out, anyways. Yeah. Right. Uh, number nine for your uh, footing drain. So uh, 
they'll put some kind of a thing at the end of the pipe. It looked like there was a spreader on there, I thought. Yeah, there's a rip wrap. Um, right. Number 10. What is it? And that has built. Yeah, they always have it. Yeah, and that's it. That's my motion. Thank you, Rick. Someone like to second, please. I'll second it. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Any questions? Discussion? We have a motion and second to approve lot one. There you go, for the record. And we could share these standard conditions with the applicant as well, just so that they know what those enumerated items are. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, she'll get it. She's seen it before, I think. Yep. Commissioners, anything else? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Against? None. Abstain? None. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Good Thank luck. Thank you very much for your time. Next item on the agenda is Old Business, 25 Briar Wood Drive. I just note here, while with the changing at the podium, the next item that's on the agenda had been um, scheduled for the 27th. Uh, there was a conflict with the applicant, so I don't think we're going to hold uh, Brunswick Holdings tonight. Correct. There was yeah. a little, that was a, what they originally proposed. I had thought at yeah. some point they thought they might be ready, but the conflict was still there. But rather than have it not be on the agenda. Yeah still there good so we, we probably won't have it so mr richard telly please good evening um i'm back again for the second time on the 25 briarwood drive which is my residence uh there were uh, four issues that needed to be addressed uh on the last plan which was submitted i don't know if all of you have a copy of um of that plan i i do have a revised plan uh, which i'm going to pass around to everyone just pass them to Gary uh, Gary pass them here we can send them around okay. we're, gonna, we're gonna be short about two or three because of the last meeting I think there were only uh, five Commission members here you needed something go ahead Gary please okay so for the benefit of those of you who were not here last week there were basically uh, four items that uh, needed attention and needed to be addressed one was the location of the proposed swimming pool the second was the location of the proposed garage the third was uh, the locate relocation of an existing woodshed which is presently on the property and the fourth item was uh, the concern over the uh, roof drainage from the uh, new proposed garage. So uh, just taking them in order, I'll start with the, the, pool, the swimming pool. And what I've done is I was able to uh, move it about 10 feet closer to the house from what it was originally shown on the um, original plan that was submitted uh, so now it's 25 feet from the edge of the deck that presently exists taking it uh, almost completely out of the review area there's just a small little corner of it which is in the review area which is all all lawn and grass uh, presently anyway um, as far as the, the garage the location of the garage we talked about twisting it and turning it several different in several different uh, positions and um, Commission member um, Ewan made a, a good suggestion that possibly we could we could turn it on a 30 degree angle um, to give a little more distance uh, from the the wetland area um, after going out and measuring it and jockeying around with it a little bit uh, I found that actually there was 
uh, more distance uh, to be had by making it uh, parallel to the existing garage. So as you can see on the plan, uh, by just swinging it around basically 90 degrees from what the original plan showed, uh, we now maintain a distance of 20 feet from the wetland boundary. Um, as far as the um, storage shed, which is shown in the uh, lower left-hand corner of your plan, uh, we talked about taking that and moving it next to the garage. However, um, after redesigning this a little bit, it seemed like a, a better location for it would be uh, right behind the existing garage and um, right adjacent to the proposed uh, uh, paver driveway. As far as the, the new garage, uh, there were some issues uh, relating to the drainage, what was going to happen to it. So uh, what I've done is shown a, a four inch PVC um, drain to um, uh, drain right onto the driveway where all of the water presently runs down to the end of the cul-de-sac, into the catch basin, and into the wetland area so that there would be no roof drainage coming off from the back of the proposed building. Um, other than that, I think uh, those were all the issues that were in question and of concern, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the Commission may have. Thank you, Gary. Commissioners, any thoughts or questions? Rick? Um, I see that you have the roof drain going into your driveway up on top. I think it would be better if you brought it down lower just because I would think in the winter as snow or ice melts, your driveway is going to be always icy. A little farther down the driveway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if that matters. If there are any indication like we had last week, it certainly would ice up. Um, you know, I'm not understanding how come that's better than having it stay on site because you're just going to drain it right into the road very quickly. It's going to get in the catch basin and right out into the water course. Why would we not have that go into the ground on site? Was there a discussion about that? There was. There was a, what's not shown on this plan is that catch basin is a combination catch basin and sediment chamber that then leads into the detent pond for the subdivision. So All right, that makes sense. Yeah. To, to okay. me, it made more sense. And he has a Belgium block curb curb along the driveway, and presently that's where all the water runs now, and it's the way the driveway is pitched now so that it does all run down that uh, uh, north side curb and then out into that catch basin mm -hmm. anyway. And it seems to me, like I said, it made sense with a grit chamber being right there in a detent pond rather than you're right. So close to the water table to begin with, that I don't think infiltrators is going to work. Yeah. Well, that was the only reason for that whole iteration there, or second iteration or third iteration that we went through here. I'm sorry, I missed the last meeting. Um, I do have a couple questions. I hope they're not too repetitive. What are these um, lines here outside of the plantings? Which lines are you referring to? I believe to? it was the uh, uh, to the lines, the lines that were one indication of the wetland line versus the, another one that was later determined by Otto Theo, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yes. Um, where was the area of disturbance, the violation, subject to the violation, just where the plantings are? Yes. Okay. Yes, sure. Do you have a list of the, the plants, um, like the thornberry? I'm not familiar with that. Do I have a list of them? Yeah, species. Yeah. Uh, they're specified on the plan as far as the size and the type. No, I mean the species. Uh, I don't. I, I don't. don't I don't know what a thornberry is. Yeah, I don't either. But that's what Jeff yeah. Ford told I, me. I think we'd plant. need to find out if these are native. Yeah. Um, also, red twig. There are a couple of red twigs. One, one that I know of is native, and one that isn't. So we should make sure that's native. And shad blow probably is going to be native. Other thoughts or comments? Certainly can. Yeah, please, Diana, go is ahead. Is there going to be any grading on the property? 
Uh, none other than, you know, where the uh, foundation for the garage and the slab uh, for the garage is going to be located, um, and obviously excavation from the pool. Yeah. That, that brings up a question, Diane, if I may jump in there. Uh, Gary, to the extent that you're going to have the, the work going on, is it necessary to put up a, a silt fence or some sort of uh, hay bales or something that Scott might want you to while, the, while you're digging and constructing? Um, yes, it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's that's. Well, what what would your preference be? Hay bales, silt fence, or snow bales? Snow bales. Well, if we do it in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you'd be doing it in the winter. Whatever works out best for you. All right. I think um, probably uh, silt fence would be okay. easiest. The 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 grading does it extend past the limits of the garage, or the pavement? Are you just are you changing the contours outside of the footprint of the garage and the new paver? That twenty foot distance between the corner of the garage to yeah, where the window no. is that no, that'll that'll remain the same. Okay. Other other than, you know, just grading off uh the uh material that's taken out for the, the footing and the foundation for the garage, it'll be pretty much at the same grade that it's at right now. You're not going to grade that over into the wetland, no, right? No, 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 okay. not at all, not at all. Rick, no, I was going to say because I'm almost positive that Gary said last week that uh, all this is already lawn. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah, it's all lawn already. Yeah, I went out and saw oh, it, yeah. so I could see it was. Thank you for taking the time to do the color. It's rare that we do well, get colors. On that the was uh, with compliments and assistance of my granddaughter. Oh, that's nice. Thanks. Yeah. Commissioners, other thoughts? Any comments from the audience? No, hear, hearing none. Seeing none. Scott's back. I think he's going to help us on the... Uh, Technical nomenclature. The native plantings. Gary, just a real quick here. Well, one of the things that I suspect we might need, and I think it's uh, at least time stamped of, of being December 6, 2006, the original plan submission. Is that correct? I, know, I believe uh, that we, uh, we had a, a resubmission beyond that date because I think the 60 days was running pretty close. Or there was an extension given, wasn't there? There, there was, was an, an extension. extension given. That's yeah. what it was. Right. There Thank was you. an extension given. Thank you. Scott, I know that the corner Cerasea is the red root twig dogwood, but there's also a corner Salba, which is not native. So we'd want to make sure you don't use something like that. But do you, the thornberry I'm concerned about because I don't know what that is. Shadblow is, will be the amelanter, which is... I believe. Shablow service berry is, you're right, is the Elm right. Anchor anadensis with um, yeah, the Cornus Saracea and To the extent we can't find that tonight, it's easy enough to state as if this does get moved forward to put it as a condition that all the plantings must be native. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, other thoughts or questions? On the uh, thornberry uh, plant, I'm open to a, uh, a substitution if someone would like to. Uh, make a recommendation rather than putting thornberry. What are you looking for there? What kind of a shrub? Something with some color maybe. Winterberry? Winterberry? Mm-hmm. Sounds good. How, how I like Rotisolata. How tall do those grow? Um, 
probably seven, I think they make it eight feet or something like that. They have the red berries in the wintertime. Oh, yeah, right. They're they're really nice in a mm -hmm. wetland. I mean, that might be, there are a lot of different wetland shrubs you could put in there. All right, well. If that's but I, I don't know that you'd want to put that many of those in there. You know, well, there's cholesterol, the folia. I think we were showing one, two, three, four, five thornberries. So maybe if they get that large, maybe put three or four winterberry. Yeah, that'd probably be fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Winterberry it is. Winterberry it is, Scott. It's okay. the, the discussion here. Thank you. One of your was well open. Like to entertain a motion, please. Uh, we still have. Uh, I'm sorry, Scott has something here. Hold I'm on. I'm sorry. The commission has to make a determination if the. Um, Mr. Rich Tully has not paid the fine that he was issued if they are going to. That is to still stand in light of all the rest of the apple work that's being done here. I don't think any of us know to the extent of what that fine is, uh, quite frankly. I knew we, or at least some of us knew that, that there was a violation. Um, I don't know if we know the deep, I don't know. I don't know the details of it. Are you familiar that you would like to discuss that now, or do you have a record of something that you'd like to pull out? Uh, I think everybody should have been sent copies of it uh, two or three meetings ago. I don't recall it. I'm sorry. F forgive me. Was it was that our, uh, I mean, what I'm getting at, maybe for others, you might have some other thoughts, was I don't remember a dollar amount, and I don't want to make a decision yes or no on something that I find out it's, uh, you know, somebody, some, just that without a dollar amount. That's part of our regulations is that you can Make All right, it says there's a letter dated May 9th, 2006, day, uh, addressed to Gary and Linda Riccitelli. Notice of violation has a couple paragraphs, and I'm just going to skip ahead to the third paragraph. It says, please be advised that the above actions carry a $500 fine for conducting a regulated activity without a permit and a $100 a day, $100 a day fine for as long as the fill material and wetlands in the wetlands and the 40-foot upland review area. So to the extent that this was an ongoing at $100 a day, that, that would be incredible, a lot of money. Was that ever decided? But I thought there was a letter that Mr. Richitelli also wrote saying. Maybe that's that behind he, here. I'm sorry. Let me read on. That he was going to hire somebody or whatever. maybe that's what he did. I hired Otto. I don't know. Yeah, there is a letter dated July 19th. So, does, so if someone would just count the days roughly here, <laughs> May 9th through July 19th in 2006. Um, dear Mr. Allen from, from Gary, and I'll pass this around for everyone's to review. Yeah. I have a letter that was dated July 11th from uh, Scott. It says... Uh, you hereby notified you're being fined five hundred dollars. I'd recommend that in lieu of the uh, extent that he went to to come up with this plan, that we forego that. Yeah, um, yeah, look on the back side of the. Um, it's May ninth. Mm -hmm. Here's the July eleventh. That's what uh, Jim was just reading us. And then on July 19th, and then the response he replies. To that. I'm sorry, Jake. I, I think I got finish. it. Go ahead. Did, Jim, do you said you anything more other than what you recommended? No. No, thank you. Scott, if I, uh, if I recall correctly, I think uh, when you and I met out on site, um, right after the violation was cited, we had some discussion about the fine and about possibly um, uh, substituting it with a nice um, planting schedule that uh, we had Jeff Gordon uh, put together for us, uh, including you know all of these uh, wetlands type plants. That is correct. Uh, but again, you know, when when I reviewed the regulations in its entirety, um, it still boils down to the commission right. 
to their whether decision, of course. Their decision right. to uphold whether we go forward or not with it. So. Okay. The letter is circulating around. If anyone would like to, to make have some thoughts on that. I have the July 11th, and I also have the July 19th, which is the one that you wrote, correct? To Scott? Yes. yes. All right. Oh. Yeah. Does anybody have any? Winterberry is what we're using. Winterberry was mentioned. I'm sorry. Does anyone have uh, four of them? Any comments on Jim? Jim's recommendation. I just think we should be somewhat consistent. So I don't know what past practices have been in a case like this. Is there any precedent? It's the first time for me. Well, I think yeah, I mean our fine regulation has been. Is fairly new only in the past few years and there has um, there have been only one other of this uh, magnitude and that was at Partridge Farm Estates that stood because there was no remediation proposed they also never showed up to the meeting right <laughs> <laughs> they never showed up right they paid the fine Right, that's what I'm saying. Scott, I'm going to put you on the spot to some extent with this question, but it, did uh, Mr. Ricciatelli make a good faith effort during that May to July period to meet with you and come up with some alternatives? And did he listen? Intently. He listened intently. Yes. You know what? It's, it, no matter what, money talks either this way or that way, so... Um, he has. He did hire a soil scientist to come out there, and uh, he felt that there could have been uh, a, a variation. As you can see, it's not huge, but there was mm -hmm. a variation to it. Uh, he has. He did hire somebody to uh, put together the planting detail here and put it on the plan. Um, and while while you were up, one other thing I'll just add in: he did agree to put a silt fence along this whole area as well, which is during construction, obviously. Um, I, I don't want to impose my will upon the, the whole commission, everyone to speak up, but I'm, I'm going to go along with what Jim said because of the good faith effort that I see Gary having here and listening to our input at the last meeting whereby he came back with alternatives that did, I think, improve the, the planned and the, the proposed uh, application. Others? I kind of agree also. We need a separate motion for this one. Well, I, I oh, just went on. Same thing. Yes, Mike. Um, it, it basically, it's been remediated to the point that it needs to be remediated. It, or is that with the plantings? That's yet? going to okay. be part of and parcel of this whole uh, application uh, for all of the regulated areas with the parking, the, the two buildings, the pool, et cetera. Um, and I would. You would have to have a separate motion for um, the penalty phase. Jim, would you like to put yours in the form of a motion? Your recommendation, that is. We get the wording correct. Um, I uh, make a motion that the fine that was imposed as of uh, by letter of dated July 11th be rescinded based on the remediation and the plans. <clears throat> that have been proposed by Mr. Richitelli. Thank you, Jim. Someone second, please. Second. Rick seconds. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Against. Abstain. Passes unanimously. Now the application. I, I have another question. What vegetation was taken out? It looks like there were some trees that were removed. There was a, there were some uh, dead trees. Uh, I think there were a couple of maple trees and uh, a couple of oak trees that were right along the um, perimeter border of the um, uh, wetland area. That's what was removed. Diana, you never fail to amaze me. How did you know trees were removed? Yeah, yeah. Well, I went there, but also May 9th, the the violation said trees were were removed. 
I'm looking so, at the, the application. I'm seeing no indication of the, like a tree line or something, and I was wondering how you discovered that. <laughs> well, there, Thank you. there are large trees along the edge of the wetland, which um, you know are important to be there. Um, you know, it might be good to have one, at least one tree put back in if there were trees removed there. Now, did you say that that uh, did you say Jeff Gordon did a plan? Jeff Gordon did this layout for the uh, landscaping. And he didn't give you a list of what these plants actually, the species of them? He just gave me the names. And the Did sizes. he give you numbers of how many to put in there? Yes. It says um, 8, 15 to 18 inch, 9, 3 to 4 feet, and 5, 18 to 20 inch. See that first number? That's the quantity. Oh, yeah. Well, the the shad blow, some of these, depending on which one it is, can get kind of tree-like. You know, they're small trees, so it just seems, seems like they might be kind of the trees to sure well, to drink a lot of water. They're important well, that's to have. that's one of the important reasons to have the large trees yeah. there that's because they do mm. suck up the water. Is that damp there when you're walking? Um, or wet to the during stream? April. Yeah. April. April. It's a little bit, a little bit damp. Well, I concur with Diane. Then just, you would, might want to consider something that'll drink water. Other thoughts or questions, commissioners? Drew? Is uh, Acer Rubrum on that uh, native plants list? Can we ask for one of those? What is it called again? Red maple. Red, uh, swamp maple. Red what maple. did you call it? Acer Rubrum. Acer Rubrum, thank you. It's okay with me. Simple enough. R red maple. What diameter? Not a, not a Japanese no. red maple. Right. It's, it's called it. It's yeah, it's, it's Acer rubrum. You've got to make sure you get the right species, not a crimson maple or something like that. You've got to be very specific. Okay. Did you say a diameter that would be suggested? Um, those Three grow. Inch. They go grow pretty quickly, so. Also, yeah, that's that's probably, yeah. It yeah. There. It would be, you know, I think there's plenty of space in there to put a couple. Um, that was really opened up in there from what it looked like to me. Is that the case? Was that looking in the right spot? It's pretty bear now and you want to get the shade back in there that'll help keep the invasive species down once you open that up you're gonna get briars in there and vines and all sorts of things so well, part of what was there yeah also. yeah but it just gets worse once you open it up you want to try mm -hmm. to get as much shade in there as possible we, we have quite a bit of shade from the trees that are on the lawn right now mm -hmm. they're pretty tall trees and it actually covers that that whole area it shades it right out in the summer Thank you, everybody. That was helpful all the way around. What yes, go ahead. On a, on a tree here? One, two. Quantity. Four. Let's get two trees. And no, at and least two, two and a half caliber. That and sounds good. Then uh, you can reduce the winterberries to two or like or four still. I think it's good to have the shrubs in there until those trees get going. I don't think you know that's a problem, but they they could uh, four is not that that many really they don't get very wide they're mostly narrow once again thank you entertain a motion on this application please make a motion to approve the site plan with uh, the different bush which could be uh, four winter berries Two red maples, which is a suburban. Acer, Acer, Ruben, Ruben. Okay. -U -R -M. Gary has it. Uh, the installation of silt fence. I think uh, if Scott could, before construction start, if Scott could take a look at it, just to make sure it's in the right location. Okay. And. Uh, <coughs> What else is here? Is this drawn by Jeff Gordon, or this is just existing site plan that I was highlighted? Uh, it was the as built. That has. That's why there's no um, signature or seal right. on it. And then okay. Mr. Rich Sally used that to sketch in. Okay. I mean, it's it's actually accurate. Yeah, right, right. Well, the rev according to the date here, revised March 8, 2007. 
Uh, those are reflect the revisions for the garage and for mm -hmm. the shed right. and for the pool relocation. Right. Uh, let's see. Well, Rick will enumerate some yeah. conditions which you'll be notified well, I assume of. you're going to hire someone's going to be, so number one. Well, we're going to be using this as your site plan. So number two, in case there's any revisions. Right. Not much else. <laughs> not much else. Uh, Cause you're not putting any uh, footing drains. That's about it. Now, the, if memory serves me from the last meeting, the, you're not sure if the pool is actually going in at this this year. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So. Oh. Still, uh, it still holds that if if you do your garage now, you put sill fence, and then when the time comes to do your pool, you have to contact Scott still and right. put sill fence again. Right. Also, um, bear in mind at the end of three years, though, if the pool is not in the process, would have to be started over again. Three years. Three years. Okay. Right. Hmm. That's, That's it. it. Anyone would like to second that motion, please? I'll second it. I think Leslie got it in a moment before you did, Bill. Thank you very much. We have a motion on the floor or on the table by Rick, second by Leslie. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much again. Okay, thank you very much. Go right ahead. I don't see any new business listed on the agenda. Uh, is there anyone else have any new business they'd like to bring up? Quiet group tonight. None. Moving us right along to item number six, the enforcement officer's report. And clearly March 2nd, a storm event was something that cut everybody in uh, town looking at water. Here's some more, Gary, if you'd like these. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Thank you. very the, much. Uh, the conditions, are you going to send those to me in the mail? Yes. You get a whole, packet. whole letter. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, Scott, the storm event. I actually, the only reason I put that on there is obviously it was um, for anybody that didn't get snow, got rain in this part of the country. And it was absolutely a very difficult time for an awful lot of people that got water and never have. But I, the reason I put this on here is that time and time again, we have, it, it, I'm going back to volume again mm -hmm. and, and runoff, and I'm, I'm still really glad that we've, we have that in our regulations. But f for me at this point, the every engineer in the world that has st stood before us in the last, well, for me in the last 20 years here, ha have all said that these are the types of storms that there's just no way they can possibly possibly engineer for to be able to to hold the water and I just at this point when you have a hundred percent parking lot for the entire town where are you going to put that water there's just no place for it to go and I you know, most of the people that um, did have concerns were really very good about appreciating and understanding the fact that it was I think 96 was the last time that this that this town experienced this and we did not have I believe close to four inches of rain in only 12 hours instead of 24 hours so I mean, it was a phenomenal amount of water in a very short amount of time and uh, with that comes a lot of consequences to a lot of people and I don't see how we could possibly um, prevent that from happening again at all I mean it's just a, lot, a quirk of nature that that happens and I, I feel really badly for the people that that all that water but yeah, you, know, you yeah, all probably was. have your own little stories or part of your neighborhood that, that you could uh, talk about it and share with each other. Um, I know I've seen a number of uh, areas that are around catch basins, one in particular that I, I want to tell Scott about later, where the catch basin in essence collapsed from so much water going through it. It just, it just it was tremendous. So I'm not sure if there anyone needs to bring anything to Scott's attention about something that you witnessed that, that may be helpful in the future, but I, I agree with Scott. Uh, that there is uh, a lot of impervious surface now that the water's running faster over and of course since it was frozen to some extent I mean, it just didn't have anywhere to go down but it flowed and I've, I 
don't ever remember seeing the, some of the water courses up this high. Um, maybe back in 96, some of them I know did come over the roads in it, but tremendous. Any other, want to share anything about your neighborhoods or stories or anything? No, I guess uh, water stories. I had enough water stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, I think to, to, get, to get back to the issue, it, it seems to be that we're told that, you know, understandably that these types of storms don't happen, don't happen, don't happen that mm -hmm. often. And the reality is, is that they're happening more often, or, or the, like you said, the volume of water that's coming through the town so quickly is just happening much more often. We're flooding in, in many, many neighborhoods much more quickly. Um, and I think that, again, that's just a big concern because of the impervious surface. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. So it, hopefully the um, we can, again, back to, to addressing volume and having pre and post hydrographs be as close as possible, um, which is something we've been striving for for a good number of years now, uh, that every little drop helps. I mean, even, even most additions, they were asking them to put infiltrators in um, everywhere at this point just to try to reduce the amount of water and to give some some groundwater recharge. I mean, that's 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 the other point. Yeah, I th I think that last point was the one I was going to come to is that the groundwater recharge or percolation or just how quickly the the ground will absorb water rather than just sheet flow was demonstrated during conditions when we have had people give testimony in front of the us at the podium that in fact the ground doesn't freeze and the water will go down and through the systems that they build. Well, in this time they couldn't have. The water was flowing so quickly that it didn't go down and, and what is normally there, groundwater take up, it didn't absorb anything. I don't know if, if you have probably in your career and certainly Diana's has, have seen where the, the ground has been frozen before and thus there isn't the, the normal, um, I don't know what better way to put it other than the normal take up by the ground. I have one and other item. Of please go ahead, Scott. Um, one site plan. Bracebrook School. There has there is a request to. This is somewhat of a. Uh, Where's the entranceway? That'll help everyone get uh, the bearings. There's Granite Road there's out, Granis there. out there. Okay. So the driveway comes in. Here, yeah. this is all parking in this area. There's a request to put in a walking trail around the tree line here and back over to here again. And the wetlands are quite a bit farther down over here. There is a stone wall, there is tree and the like. I just bring it to your attention to see if anyone. Is wants this to the new addition? Uh, down here? Um, Basically, if the driveway, the new addition is either here or down yeah, here. here right. This proposed addition is not. Didn't valid. Happen. That's didn't happen. Yeah, I right. can tell you that. It's out, it's out of, uh, over here. So this, this in fact is a uh, basketball courts, if I recall correctly, and then the playgrounds right here. Right. So you're saying a perimeter walking? Yes. The the what the, kind of surface? The the um, the proposal that is not formal yet. This is just I guess it was taken to um, by one of the parents. To the board of ed at, one of, at their meeting last night, I believe the proposal is to have a macadam surface so that they can plow it. And that they want to be able to have the kids out there um, all times of the year, rather than just in the in the in the good weather, and rather than have it be something gushy and mucky or something that they can't plow the snow off. I know those are very technical terms, gushy and mucky, but that's what happens. Um, no, I think they want to pave it. Do, do they ever plow, or is it the walking trail around High Plains? I don't think I've ever seen them plow it. It just uh, gets used, I don't know. They're just doing like a five-foot path, not for a pickup truck, maybe for like a... Bobcat. I think they're looking for a pickup truck. Oh, that wide? Yes. I mean, that's, the, that's kind of the, the goal here. You could Eight feet. <laughs> it, 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 presumably, if you want to plow it, you're going to plow it with something... This is some equipment that they already have or that the town already has. I don't know what's small enough. Do we have anything small like that? Well, the board, is the board of Ed has pickups with 
plows on. But what I was getting at is if they would, if they're presuming you're going to plow it, they're going to want to plow it with the equipment they have, and presumably they have a pickup truck, so they'll want it at least that wide, unless they have one of those bobcats or something that's smaller. And I don't think they have that, so you might be talking at least the. They have the regular plow. Doesn't yeah. it plowing get subbed out anyways? No. No, not for schools. No, they do it. No, nope. they do it. Yeah. Then, Leslie. Of, then, of course, if you have plowing, you have more in, increase of damage. It's, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, you've got a greater chance when when you're, you're you're plowing. You've got a greater chance of of damaging the plants that are, that are all mm. already there. Are you are you opposed to uh, the path at all, or, or no, just I'm the not macadam? No, I'm not opposed to the path. Yeah. Okay. Good. I, I just think it should be a dirt path. I, I would guess, I'm not sure, but I would guess that the cost of paving a path has got to be a lot more than those, whatever that material, that real fine material is at High Plain. Process. process. Yeah. Actually, that's a process concrete mix is what they did at High Plains. Yeah. That softens up too, though, right? Yeah. Yes, it does. Eventually. Yeah. Well, actually, it compacts and gets harder. Really is what happens. Yeah, you, you can easily you can hammer stuff right into it if you have to without any problem. I think the pathway should be like five feet. I mean, you do eight foot paved, then you're gonna need probably a foot on either side just for them to clear it and put yeah. process down or I mean, whatever. It's gonna be a a large area all the way around there. It doesn't make sense. To well, me. well. We can get into the merits of the pathway. The one thing that I guess that we have our jurisdiction on is to what extent is it near the wetland and in our, you know, within our purview. I, I'm certainly sure on the one side of the school it is. I don't recall back from the back part of that field. So uh, I think that right now the consensus is that everyone, and speak up if you don't agree with this, is that the path, a pathway is fine, but we're not inclined to see them put in any kind of. There, there is there, for for elementary schools if it's a, a certain temperature like and I forget what it is at the moment something like 35 degrees or lower the children aren't allowed outside right. something like that so the only weather would be the only discriminating factor I think. Leslie, if, if it is just a dirt path with with the tree tree leaves that does that does keep it from getting muddy once you get a, a, mm -hmm. a good good amount of leaves there mm -hmm. I mean it's just you just notice I just noticed that walking behind high plains mm -hmm. yeah, but a process path you still could pave it and it's paveable I mean I mean uh, plowing you still can no, plow still a plow, process yeah. Yeah, I mean well, that, you, you it's hard pick it up a little bit right the thing the thing here is that w this wetland line which is not totally shown here is This is a 30 scale map, so your the path is up here, wetlands are down here, you're a good two and a half inches away there. Or two if inches. you walk along this side, of the, I'm sorry, if you walk along this side of the school, which is I think the easterly side, you step off the pavement that's along here, you're going to sink. It's wet. Yeah. And there's a pond that sits right out here. There's a path back there too, though, isn't there? There is there's a path that, that goes back, yeah, the around the uh, place gate. Place. So we're um, uh, so let, let's let's pull, take this from another aspect. Then our jurisdiction is going to end at some point, x amount of feet past the school here, mm -hmm. and and then they can pretty much do what they want. So this is why uh, we're here, because actually all of this area over here is is filled. And at some point in time, they must have filled as well on back when the school was built. But our, you know, at some point we actually run out of jurisdiction for our 100-foot review area. Well, there's a pond there too, though, isn't there? Somewhere That's way on that side. On the western oh, side. Sir. Western side. My thought is to to allow Scott uh, to use his administrative discretion on here with a strong recommendation from the commission. But for those of you who want to speak up, uh, that that we would rather see them put in a pervious surface that is one that will drain well and, and take up water rather than an impervious surface. Your thoughts please. I agree. Thank you Drew. See a couple of heads nodding. Leslie, yes? The path goes all the way around the school or? No. 
That's a one where is uh, it around go? that field in the back, which is uh, pretty much okay. the northerly side of the school. Northeast what if you just area. avoided the wetland area? Well, they're not going to be anywhere near it. This just falls within our 100-foot review area. Okay. All right. I mean, we're, we're talking, again, you know, 30, 60, 85 feet, 80, 85 feet. I only have about seven scales all over the place, and not one of them is ever in my pocket when I need it. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's it's. Can I um, can I just say something about that? I mean, if they pave it, um, we just got that ordinance from the town that they're not using sand anymore. They're just going to use salts. So Where they're going to be salting in that area? Yeah. I mean, I did just to throw that out. I mean, yeah. I'm not. I mean, that's that's. But a they'd have to comply with that just whether we allow it or not. This is really not a path. It's a driveway. That sounds to me more like a driveway. I mean, I go a path that. is something. Yeah, or a road. <laughs> a, road. A, a path is something like five feet, and you you only cut a few bushes or trees. I can't I mean, understand why you ten would feet want wide. It's going to be. I mean, to, for an eight foot driveway, you're gonna it's going to need ten foot of clearing. Yeah, about seventy feet. <laughs> Diana, will they be taking out vegetation to put this in? Uh, I'm told no. So far, I mean, I haven't walked exactly where this was going, but I've been told no vegetation has come out. What will it be on? What's the surface now? Uh, well, it's a back It's a play there. field. Yeah, it's a Isn't play it there, field. there are two baseball fields back there that it's going to go yes. around? there's at least one. Yeah, it's pretty clear back there. There's not. I, I, I want to bring up, just go back to what Diane just asked. I, I would recommend, as I said a moment ago, about and give a strong recommendation to them for a pervious surface. But if they are going to mess with the tree line, I want it to come back to here again because I've been out there across that tree line when I helped build that playground and it is wet. Whether it's marked as a wetland line up there or not, I, I know it is. Well, no, again, this is this is fill. Yeah. Bottom line, so I think this, it was, a, yeah. historically, it was a wetland. When was that wetland delineated and who did it, do you know? It was done uh, when uh, the school addition was proposed. No, still, I think, yeah, the school is uh, probably 30 or more years, 40 years old. Um, but they, they, they put this plan together as they wanted to put on an addition for Two the or three years ago, data, they, yeah, they were here. For the, the, as the demographics changed. Any other thoughts or comments on it? January of 05 is when they added the wetlands and the soils types, and they've characterized, I mean, um, listed all the ones that were out there. And if memory serves me correctly, and I don't think it's, yeah, here it is. It is uh, Ken Stevens of Environmental Services. I thought it was Tom Peaches, but same company. January of 05 is the answer. Uh, field survey 12-2904. And then uh, and located on 111. 11.05. Yeah. Because that was one of the other, uh, um, uh, when this edition was so close. Yeah, the, the, one of the concerns is, Dan, and, and anyone else who wants to take a look at this, the, the wetlands line is only delineated partway up to where the, I think they were doing proposed work. Had there been a request been for, I think they would have probably continued that line out. I could be wrong. Do, do you think that suggests that as well, Scott? Well, they're showing past it as being all fill. It's UD. Yeah, it is. That's where that wetland line yeah, stopped. That's where because all it the fill. filled. But the existing that's tree line has been there for yeah. a significant period of time, and it should remain, in my opinion. Yeah, that. Uh, and there is a slope here, so they're going to have to go below the slope because the trees are growing out of. I mean, you go from there's a five foot gradient in uh, less than like 22, 25 feet, so it's a fairly. Mm fairly steep slope right there so they're going to stay below that anyway at least that's what I've been been told would you like to handle this anything differently no Scott clear on what it is that the the charge is good luck yeah, yeah I mean, I'm not yeah. paying the bill for this it's a lot of yeah, asphalt I, I, I cannot believe that they're going to buy that oil based asphalt that's got to be expensive so we um, pervious surface Stay out of the trees and uh, reduce the width. Did I hear that at one point also? Okay. 
And certainly a request that none of the walking paths be be paved. Yeah. So by reduce the width, we're thinking here just so conceptually. I'm not sure what they were thinking. I want to be clear. Is it five to seven feet? Is, is I'm way pretty wide. sure yeah. I heard eight. So that's that's doesn't make sense. And yeah, again, the idea was a, a pickup, and my first thought was fine. Push all the snow into the um, into the ball field because they're not going to be using it anyway, rather than into the tree line. Mm -hmm. Again, because if there is salting going on, it's just going to kill it. If necessary, um, I'll be glad to entertain any discussions with the Board of Ed on this if they would like to, to have me there or them come here. They'd be more than welcome to do that. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Hearing none, 8.40 p.m., may I get a motion to adjourn? So moved by Rick. Second, anyone? Jim, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Good night.